this man of God really has been uh, there uh, in Tiffany and my life since the, the very beginning of our ministry together. The very first year that Tiffany and I started pastoring, we were invited and encouraged, in fact, forced to <laughs> go to a little group called the Under 40 Pastors Group. It, it's just what it sounds like, okay? It's a small group of pastors under 40 because there's not that many. There's more now. It's pretty cool. Um, but there was less at that time, about 10, 11 years ago in Foursquare. There was about, I don't know, just a handful of us. And right there, we were probably only pastoring for about six months or so. And there was a group of, of pastors that we've remained close over the years, and it's been really wonderful. But Pastor Mike was, was there from the very, very beginning for us, and he planted his church in Ukiah um, just after we started uh, here at Lifeline. So we've really had parallel journeys. We've been able to share um, successes. We've been able to share defeats. We've been able to share our hearts with each other along the way and encourage each other. Um, so when I, when I bring him up here and, and when I say I'm, I'm bringing up a friend to, to preach to you, I mean I'm, I'm bringing someone who is an actual friend of mine. This is a real friend. This is not a, a ministry friend, a church friend. You know, you got church friends, you know, and they're, you see them at church and they're like, oh yeah, I see you at church. I'll see you next Sunday. It's about as often as I'm good with. Come on, no, we don't do any of that. No, 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 no. But this man, um, he, he has been there for us and we've been there for each other for, 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 for all this time. And this man is absolutely crushing it in the city of Ukiah. Um, their, their church is growing at, just at a pace that is, he was sharing with me is just absolutely incredible. I'm so, so proud to call you my friend. Would you please do him and me the honor of standing to your feet and welcoming Pastor Mike Dyer from the river, Ukiah. Come on, let's give it up for him. My guy. Let me turn that on for you. Bro, I love you, man. Dude, I love this guy. Hey, you guys got awesome pastors. Can we hear it for your pastors? I love both of them. Um, you know, uh, my wife couldn't be here with me, but if you've ever spent any time around my wife or Tiffany, you both have a unique laugh, right? How many of you guys know Pastor Tiffany has a unique laugh? My wife has a unique laugh. Whenever I want to find out where my wife is, I just got to listen for the laugh, right? Who else has a spouse or a family member like that? You know where they're at by the noise that they make, right? So, hey, Tiffany, I did want to say, can I encourage you with something, man? Just How many of you guys just love your pastor's passion? When you were sharing your heart about what Jesus did on the cross, his body, I love your passion, and I felt like the Lord just wanted me to encourage you with that, that your passion is so infectious to other people, and that your love for Jesus is what's going to draw people closer to him. Don't ever lose that part of your heart because that part of your heart is what draws people into the heart of Papa God. He's placed that inside of you. So uh, you guys, your pastors are the real deal. These people, love, they talk about you uh, all the time. Some of it's good, some of it's not, right? Amen? <laughs> but we have that right, man. That's our right as pastors. You're not there, so we can talk about you however we want, right? But, uh, but we, we, we love your pastors, and uh, it's weird that this is the first time that we've got to come and be here, but I am so excited as I came around and checked out the facilities and just got to see what God is doing here. I believe that God is taking Lifeline to a whole nother level. Do you guys sense that? How many you guys just sense that in your heart? That God is taking your church to a whole nother level of influence. I want everyone to say that word with me, influence. Influence. God is giving you guys influence in your community. And as I just kind of cruised around Lodi with uh, Pastor Elliot earlier, and we went and got some amazing keto tacos. Those, che those things were awesome, man, by the way. And uh, it, it was incredible. But as I was driving around, I was just sensing that God was going to cause Lifeline to be exactly what you guys want. Be a Lifeline to, to a city where people are far from God. How many of you guys know that God wants us to bring people that are far from him close to him? And the crazy part is it's some of the people that are already in this church. Some of the people that are in this church because we're, we're surrounded by so much stuff. And, and we have to understand tonight we're going to talk about surroundings. Everyone say surroundings. Surroundings are important. They're important for us to understand because our surroundings have a lot to do with what is going to happen in our life. I want to talk to you tonight. If you've got a Bible, I want you to open it up to Ezekiel chapter 37. We're going to the Old Testament. Everyone say Old Testament. 
you know, we're going to go to the Old Testament because I believe that this is a great opportunity for us to see what God has for us. And as I was preparing for this, I really felt like God had uh, given me a message that I believe if we listen to this has the power to transform and change the way we see things. How many of you guys know that the way we see things is very important? that we have to see things completely differently than maybe we have our whole life. Uh, you know, the book of Romans chapter 12 says, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. How? By changing the way you think, right? And the way we think will also change the way we see. It'll change the way we talk. It'll change the way that we walk. It'll change the way that we go. It all starts in our mind. So if we begin to change our mind, it'll change our vision. It'll also change the way that we talk, our thoughts become our words, our words become our actions, and our actions set the course for our life. Amen? So we have to begin to shift the way that we think, and it's so important that when we as a church, and and what I'm talking about is the church of Jesus, catch God's vision. Everyone say God's vision. I got to catch God's vision, not my own vision, and I don't got to catch the vision of our culture, because the vision of our culture will lead us way off course, won't it? But when I catch God's vision for my life and for the life of his church, and I begin to live that out, there's power in that. So I believe that today's message has the power to change some things in your life. If you lean into Jesus and open your ear up to hear what he has to say to you, amen? Look at your neighbor and say, open your ears up. Come on, open them up. Hey, we got to open our ears up and hear what God has to say because the spirit of Jesus, hey, the spirit of Jesus is always talking to us, amen? But too many times I got my ears plugged up with usually myself, right? Or or the other garbage that the world is feeding me, you know, the the news, uh, social media, all the things happening around me that that, that could get in the way of me hearing the voice of God. And I want to hopefully help you hear what God has to say. If you're taking notes, today's message is called Don't Hold Your Breath. As you can see on there, we're going to find life in the valley of dry bones because that's where God wants to speak to us is in those times where we feel dry. How many of you guys ever feel dry in your life? You ever feel like your tank's empty? Ever feel like you just don't got what it takes to keep moving forward? You you feel a little stuck? Who's ever felt a little stuck before in life, right? It's easy for us to get there, especially if you've been a Christian for a long time. Because we can get to the point where it feels like we're just going through the motions. You ever been there before? You're just going through the motions and keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. And God wants to speak life into you and into me so that we can live the life that he's called us. Because Jesus said, the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that you might have what? Life in all its fullness, right? Everyone say abundant life. A whole lot of life. Bunch of life. Good life, uh, right? <laughs> there, there was, brother. Hey, I had to bring it for you, man. I had, I had to bring it. Ezekiel chapter 37, I'm going to read verse 1 through 5. It says, the Lord took hold of me. Ezekiel's talking here. Ezekiel was a prophet. A prophet was somebody that heard from God, and God gave him a vision, amen? And so he got this vision. He said, um, God took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. Ooh, this is getting good right away, right? It was like, ooh, this sounds awesome. Bones, right? Bones, bones, bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. Paint this picture for a second. Can you guys imagine being in a giant valley and it is just full of bones? And not just any bones, but people bones, right? How many of you guys think that'd be a little trippy, right? That might be a little scary. So some of you are like, it might be kind of cool. No, that wouldn't be cool. You're, you're, the, you're the weird people, Okay. He, he led me all around among the bones covered the valley floor and they were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely what? Dried out. So, so think about this. Those dried, calcified bones are just kind of dead. There's, I mean, they're deader than dead, right? How many of you guys know they're dead? But they're, they're all dead, right? Deader, deader than dead. It says, then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? What would your first response be to that initially? Nah. No, there's no way, right? But he says here, he says, oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. How many of you guys just want to go, God, you know, I, I just don't even want to give it any thought, <laughs> right? Only, oh, God knows, right? Only God knows. Who's ever played that card before? Oh, God only knows, right? Which is true, but he wants you to begin to see some things. So he's asking these questions of Ezekiel. They're going to get him to start to think differently, Amen. 
And he said, or I, pl- I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Verse four, he says, then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. Guys, I'm here to tell you today that there's some areas of your life that are dry There's some areas of your life that feel like a pile of bones. There's some areas of your life that you've given up on. There's some areas of life in your community, in your city, in your family, in your marriage, in your kids that you've given up on. And God is here today to tell you that he's going to breathe life back into that situation in your life. We need to understand that God wants to bring life in the middle of the valley of dry bones in your life. See, this particular piece of scripture is a strong case study in our surroundings. How many of you guys know our surroundings matter? Here, here's what I know. Either our surroundings will affect us or we will affect our surroundings. We'll either be a thermometer or a thermostat. How many of you guys know that a thermometer reflects what's going on around them, but a thermostat sets the tone, amen? And either we're going to let our surroundings dictate how we're going to live Or we're going to speak to those surroundings and tell them to change, amen? Because God has given us power in our words. How many of you guys know that the tongue has the power of both what? Life and death. Life and death are both held in the power of the tongue. So our words matter. Look at somebody and say, your words matter. So depending on your perspective, surroundings. Sometimes we're, we're not aware of how powerful surroundings are. You know that there's been studies that, that retailers will, will, will put certain smells into a place. How many guys ever walk someplace like, mm, that smells delicious, right? You ever been into an Amber Crombie and Fitch? You're like, what the heck is going on in here, right? Or Red Robin, Red Robin, yum, there you go. But they'll, they'll pipe in certain scents, right? Or they'll play music. Do you know that they've figured out a certain beat per minute that is supposed to get your mind to think about buying something? Crazy, Right? certain colors. The surroundings matter. And what is around you will either affect you or you will affect what's happening around you. See, surroundings are powerful. Uh, The music uh, that they play, it'll actually change things in your life. It'll make you want to think differently. And and to understand about the power of surroundings, it's like sometimes you've been around a little kid and, and kids are getting influenced by an older brother or sister, right? I remember one time I was talking with my kids and my, my, my daughter is five years older than her brother. And she started to learn some, some big kid words, right? I mean, big kid words. And Seth started to learn some of those big kid words, but he didn't understand what they meant, right? I remember he said something one time and I go, do you know what that is? No, I don't. Like you fell down. I hurt my, I hurt my hiney, right? Do you even know what your hiney is? And he said, it's patella. Who knows what a patella is? Your kneecap, right? I had to look it up. What the heck? Hey, Siri, what's a patella? I, I had no idea. You know what I mean? But it's funny how kids can get around other people and begin to learn things, but it would be very frustrating because then these kids would go back into the surroundings around them. It's like when we used to go to camp. Remember we took kids to camp? We've taken, uh, we did youth ministry uh, together before. Uh, Tiffany had, had taken kids to camp. Uh, we, we, we've done uh, stuff with, where we've brought our church to camp with our kids. And the thing is this, you take a kid out of the inner city or out of an area where they're having a rough time and home life stinks and and it's tough at school and you get them up into the mountains for a couple of days and then their life changes. How many of you guys have ever experienced that before? Maybe you've experienced that as a child in in your own life. That's why I'm here. I'm here because that took place for me. I got out of my normal environment and something changed and I knew that God had a call on my life. The problem was when I went home, my surroundings didn't change immediately and it was easy to slip back into that. So what I have to do is begin to change my surroundings. Sometimes that's the people that I spend time with, amen? Sometimes that's the stuff that I'm watching, the stuff that I'm listening to, the news programs that I'm allowing to speak into my life, the posts that I'm looking at on social media because too many times we we want to try to compare our life to somebody else's, amen? And we get on social media and we think, oh, man, she's so pretty. Girls, you know how long it took her to get that shot? Come on, man, she didn't wake up looking like that. You can put lipstick on a pig, but guess what? It's still a pig, amen? Right? Hey, some of you are like, hold on a minute, what did he say? Listen, it, what, what I'm saying is we cannot just look at what's happening around us and think that's what it is. We have to see beyond it. Everyone say see beyond. 
God wants us to see beyond what's happening right in front of us. But these kids would come home and they'd be influenced by what's going on. They'd go right back into their old ways. Here's what I know about surroundings. Either our surroundings will affect us or we will affect our surroundings. And also your surroundings can and will influence you. Your surroundings can and will influence you. Well, I'm just listening to the music. I'm not really listening to the words. Huh? Who, who's ever said that before? Then you find yourself singing those words, right? And then you're like, Josie's on a vacation far away. What? Wait a minute. Come around and talk you. Those, that's a terrible song, man. Hey, I used to go, dude, that's a banger. This is such an awesome song. And then I started to find out what the words were about. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's not good. It's about cheating, right? <laughs> Which is not what God wants us to do, amen? So our surroundings can and will influence. And the amazing uh, part is the power of, that our surroundings have. Ezekiel is surrounded by this whole apocalyptic vision. He's got this vision of a bunch of dead bodies around him, right? And God's telling him to, to look at that, but look at it in a different way. That it's not just a pile of bones, but it can come back to life. Amen? And I wonder what God may be stirring in your heart right now that feels like it's dead. And he's saying, hey, I'm going to bring some life back into that. And my hope is that I could inspire you to catch that vision and go, come on, God. Come on, I want to be a part of it. How many of you guys want to be a part of what God wants to do in your life? We have to partner with him, amen? God does his part, I do my part. I trust him. I lean into him. I listen to him, and I begin to speak his word, not my own. Because my word would be stupid bunch of dry, dead bones, right? Stop talking about your wife that way, amen? Stop talking about your husband that way. But I mean, how many times do we call something what God doesn't see it like. God sees it different, amen? He sees your marriage as whole. He sees your health as whole. He sees your kids as getting it all together and not being so terrible, amen? He sees your finances coming together. You know, too many times we, we talk about it, just stop talking about it like it is and talk about it like it should be. That's what God wants us to do. You know, I thought that I've gone through some tough stuff, you know, but I think Zeke here is winning the prize with this vision that God gave to him, right? He's transported not physically but spiritually to catch this vision from God. And it's quite a contrast from the vision that God gave to him in the previous chapter. Because he got another vision from God in, in chapter 36, verse 34 and 35. He says, the fields that used to lie empty and desolate in plain view of everyone will be farmed again. And when I bring you back, people will say, this former wasteland is now like the Garden of Eden. The abandoned and ruined cities now have strong walls and are filled with people. Wow, what a vision. That's God showing him, hey, I'm restoring what's been broken, amen? How many of you guys know that God's in the business of restoring stuff? God is in the business of restoring some broken things in our life, and that was God's original plan for humanity, and he's showing Ezekiel a picture of what restoration looks like. Think about that beat up car that you got right now and what it would look like if it was fully restored. You're like, come on, man, I can see that. How many of you guys can close your eyes and begin to visualize some of that? I believe that God wants you to close your eyes and begin to visualize what your life would be like if it was all put back together. What your heart would be like if it was mended. What it, what it would look like if you didn't have to walk around with anxiety and worry and fear, amen? How many of you guys know that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power and of love and a sound mind, right? The scripture says, be anxious for nothing, amen? But by all things, by prayer and supplication, come boldly to the throne of grace and make your request known to God. Tell God what you need and let him work on it, right? Somebody say, work on it. Man, we need the Lord to work on it, Amen? Work on that stuff in our life. See, God is about cleaning up messes that he didn't cause. Who's thankful for that? How many guys are thankful that God's about cleaning up some messes that he didn't cause? You've caused some messes in your life. Other people have caused some messes in your life. People have jacked some stuff up. You've jacked some stuff up, but God's ready to intervene and help fix that. Amen? God is about cleaning up messes that he did not make. And God is also about extending grace to people who are in need. Who would be bold enough to say, I'm in need tonight? I need, I, need, I need the Lord to move in my life, amen? I think all of us could probably say that in some way, shape, or form. Why? Because we're not perfect. I was telling Elliot earlier, one of the things we say in our church is no perfect people allowed. If you're perfect, you got to go to church somewhere else, man, because you're going to jack it up for all of us, right? Hey. No perfect people allowed. Why? Because we're all, we're all broken. Amen? 
We're all in need of being restored and put back together. And here's what Philippians 1.6 says. It says, the good work that God began in you, he'll carry it out to the day of completion. Look at your neighbor and tell him I'm a work in progress. Look back at him and say, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. We're all a work in progress. God's working on us. God is saying that he's going to make the state of the nation of Israel like the Garden of Eden. And I believe that God is saying that he's going to take your life and, and begin to see it grow again because you thought it was done. You thought it was finished. Many times we feel like, well, this is all there is. And we feel stuck. And we get content with mediocre. How many of you guys know that God doesn't want to do mediocre in your life anymore? Our God is an awesome God, amen? He does awesome things. And he moves in awesome, powerful ways in our lives when we trust him. Look at verse 35 of of chapter 36 again. They will say the land that was laid to waste has become like the Garden of Eden. The cities that were lying in ruins, desolate and destroyed, are now fortified and inhabited. I want you to begin to see that God is at work in your life. And as you begin to get close to him and you begin to lean into him and you allow him to speak into your heart, you're going to catch his vision. And you're no longer going to feel defeated and you're no longer going to talk negative about that stuff in your life because you need to begin to speak life over yourself, over that situation, over your family, over your kids, over your marriage, over your finances, over the world that we live in. How many of you guys are just tired of seeing some of the stuff that's going on in the world and you're like, dude, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. That's what we think sometimes, right? But my God is bigger than that, right? I learned this from the veggie tales, remember? God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than the Godzilla and the monsters on TV. God is bigger than all the stuff that we face. We have to remember the great theologian, Larry and Bob, right? Those, those guys were amazing. See, but Ezekiel knew that the city was still lying in ruins. Ezekiel knew that the walls had not been fortified yet. Ezekiel knew that it didn't look like the Garden of Eden. He was standing in the middle of a valley of dry bones. It had not come back to life yet. And and I think that we could be realistic enough to see that my situation hasn't fully changed, but God is starting something, amen? How many guys know that a seed has to get planted in order for it to grow? But the first thing to understand about a seed is that it has to die fully, doesn't it? A seed has to die, germinate, go into the ground, and then it begins to grow. And I believe that God is planting some seeds in your heart tonight. He's planting some seeds of hope. Someone say hope. Because what's the opposite of hope? Hopeless, right? If we don't have hope, we're hopeless. And I think that there's a lot of hopeless people. And maybe some people that are listening online tonight or are watching this somewhere else. You may be hopeless right now, but I I believe that God wants to speak some hope into your life. Because here's what God will do. God will put our past and our present in alignment with his future. Amen? God will put our past and our present in alignment with his future. How many guys want to live in his future and not your own? And not the future that everybody else is trying to tell you is going to happen. Maybe you've grown up your whole life with people telling you you're not going to amount to much. You're never going to succeed. You're just going to stay stuck. You're just going to be the same. You're always going to talk like that. You're always going to treat people that way. You're never going to change. And I'm here to tell you tonight that that's not what God says. God says that he can help you get on the other side of where you're at. And God desires to bring our lives back to where they're like the Garden of Eden. Amen? Now we flip back to chapter 37. Ezekiel is still in a much different surrounding. He goes from the garden to the graveyard. I wonder how many times we got to do that in our life. We go from the garden to the graveyard, right? Sunday, church was awesome. Woo, praise the Lord. Get in the car and you start fighting with your wife. Woo, kids start acting up, right? Or you wake up on Monday and you got a real bad case of the Mondays. Anybody ever get that before? You show up to work and you're like, why am I here? You show up to school, why am I here? And we're going from the garden, something awesome happening in our life. We're on vacation. You've been on vacation, relaxing, sitting by the pool, chilling, getting your tan on, right? And then you got to come home, man. That whole flight home, you're like, stupid airplane, (laughs) right? Can't even fit in the bathroom. Who's ever tried to fit in one of those bathrooms, by the way? I I can't fit in it, man. I've lost 186 pounds in the last two years, though. Is that crazy? (laughs) Come on, man. So I might be able to get in there a little bit now. I got to try it. I got to maybe maybe a little more, so much more room for activities, right? That's (laughs) what it is. But I wonder how many times we've had to do that. You know what I mean? We have to do that graveyard shift sometimes, and I believe that God has given Ezekiel, and if you and I listen, I believe that we can get this strategy also for how to see things differently, amen? 
change my vision, change the way I think, change the way I talk, change the way I walk. My thoughts become my words, my words become my actions, and the actions set the course for my life, right? Proverbs says there's a road that seems right to a person, but that road ends in death, amen? It also says guard your heart above all else for all the issues of life flow from it. Right? So we need to begin to think about those things. Hey, where I'm headed is probably not where God wants me to go. Allow the Spirit to lead you. Amen? How many of you guys want to be led by the Holy Spirit in your life? That's what God is starting to get Ezekiel to see. Look at verse 4. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message. Everyone say a prophetic message. Prophetic message is a message from God, man, that hasn't happened yet, right? Speak a prophetic message. It hasn't taken place. He says, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. How many of you guys know that we got to start to speak the word of the Lord over ourselves, amen? There is power in the word of God. There's power in what God's word says about us, about our lives, about our neighbors, about the people around us. We have to begin to speak the word of God over our lives. Speak the promises of God over our lives and begin to do it on a regular basis. I can empathize with Ezekiel here. It must have been a difficult thing to speak to those dry bones. Because how many of you guys would have a hard time standing before something dead and say, live? Because some of you are there right now. E- even as I'm talking about this, you're like, but you don't, you don't understand what's been going on in my life for the last couple of years. You don't know what I've been dealing with at home. You, you don't know the, the mental and emotional pain that I've been struggling with. And, and guess what? I don't. But you know who does? God. And God still sees it and he says, hey, guess what? We could bring life back to that. Because that's what God does. God is in the business of cleaning up messes that he didn't make. And, and look at your neighbor and say, my life is messy. It is, isn't it? How many of you guys would be honest enough to say, my life is messy? Messier than you would care to really understand, amen? But God is in the business of fixing that. We spend too much time talking about what's going on around us and not enough time talking to what's going on around us. Did you catch the depth of that? I spend too much time talking about what's going on around me and not enough time talking to what's going on around me. You need to start to talk to those problems in the way that God wants you to. You need to start to talk life where you've spoken death before. We could change the way we speak about things, amen? We spend too much time talking about what's going on. We need to start talking to it. God says in verse 4, prophesy to these bones. Now, most of us are really good at describing the bones in our life, aren't we? We're, We're good at describing how dry they are, how dead they are, how smelly they are, right? I mean, we could see all those issues in our life and we could describe them with great detail. What if we began to flip the script and started to speak about those things the way that God sees them? How many of you guys know that God sees dry bones, but he says he sees alive bodies, amen? He sees dead, you see dead marriages, but God sees two people that love each other. You see kids that are running a fool and doing whatever they want, and God sees a kid that, that'll honor his mother and father with his life and, and live for him, Amen. You see a bank account that's empty and God says, hey, I got all that you need. I am ready to supply all of your needs in Christ Jesus. Amen? That's what my Bible tells me. He says, I don't want you to speak about what you see. I want you to speak about what I said. Think about that. Guys, if we would stop speaking about what we see and start talking about what God said, how many of you guys know our situation would change? We need to start talking about what God said until what you see looks like what I said. You may have situations in your life that look like dead bones. You may have a situation in your life that looks like a graveyard, but guess what? If we start to talk about it the way that God sees it, it's going to change. God is going to transform some things in and through our life when we start to see things. See, God is calling you to quit talking about what you see and begin to proclaim what God says. How many of you guys know that we got to learn God's promises? You're like, well, I don't know God's promises. You know where you find them? In the Word. <laughs> a little thing called the Bible. We got to read it. How many, guys, how, how many guys struggle with reading the Bible? It's okay. We struggle with reading the Bible. They have this thing that you can get on your smartphone that'll read it to you. <laughs> right? I, 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 I'm just saying, I went to the gym today and I put in my headphones and I put on the book of Proverbs. Anyone know the book of Proverbs? It's all about wisdom, right? Listened to the whole book of Proverbs while I was at the gym. I'm going to do it again tomorrow. 
And I'm going to just start doing that and getting the word of God in me. And, you know, is, put the music aside for a little bit. How many of you guys know that I got to get the word of God in me? Because if it's in me, it's going to come where? Out of me. And if it's in me, it's going to take up the space that all that garbage is in. Because what God's word does is it begins to fill that space and push all the garbage out of your life. We need to get the word of God inside of us. And that's why it's important for us to do that. That's why it's important for us to, to get connected and, and learn how we can do this stuff. That's why you got to go to Growth Track. I know Growth Track uh, Step 1 is starting this Sunday, right? Growth Track Step 1. If you haven't gone through Growth Track, jump in. Get into Growth Track so that you could grow and become who God has called you to be. Amen? Get in a life group. Get in a small group. If you're not in a small group, if you're not in a life group, get in one. That's how you grow. You grow staying connected to other people because we're only strong as the other roots that are next to us. You want to to know why you're not growing? Because you don't have any roots in the ground. You don't have any roots in the ground. You know, the redwood trees that grow real tall and they grow in groves and stuff like that, they don't have super deep roots. But the cool part about them is all their roots intertwine together. That's where their strength comes from. How many of you guys know that we need each other? There's strength in numbers, Amen. God calls us to do life together, and that's what you guys need to do in this church. Get into a small group. Get into uh, to growth track. Do the things that you need to do to grow and become who God's called you to be. Find a place to serve in this church because it's way more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen? And if I'm up serving, I open up a seat for somebody else to come and hear about Jesus. How many of you guys got some friends that need to hear about Jesus? Get out of your seat. Let them take it. Let them hear about Jesus. And you go serve some coffee or, or help with the kids' class or do check-in out front or come early and sweep. I mean, there's so many different things that we could do to serve the Lord by serving people. Amen? And, and it takes us doing that. We have to be intentional. I heard a story one time uh, uh, about somebody seeing things one way and then someone came in and just began to talk differently about it and it influenced them to see it from a different point of view amen and they they began to think well hey maybe they're right maybe they're right and sometimes it's just us taking a different perspective of it amen have you guys ever looked at something one time and then you looked at it from a different point of view and you could really see what it was we have to do that sometimes we have to move our feet everyone say move your feet got to move your feet Shift your eyes and look at it from a different angle. You've been stuck where you're at for too long. Let's begin to look at it a different way. See, because it's not whether or not we could use spiritual language or vocabulary about things, but what matters is when you open your mouth, do your surroundings change? When you open your mouth, do your surroundings change? How many of you guys want to be the one that when you open your mouth, the surroundings around you change? Because too many times we come to church and we learn to say, you know, how are you? Oh, I'm blessed. Highly favored of God but we don't mean it. Amen. It's okay to say that, but let's start to believe what we're saying. How many of you guys want to believe what you're saying? Amen. We need to let it get into our heart so it can come out of us. So I have a question for you. Are you going to change your surroundings or are your surroundings going to change you? Are you going to change your surroundings or are your surroundings going to change you? That's one of the biggest questions that we need to ask ourselves. Dr. Martin Lloyd said this, a Welch preacher. He said, most of our problems come from spending too much time listening to ourselves and not enough time talking to ourselves. We, we listen to what we're saying and we, and we talk ourselves into some pretty dumb stuff. Amen? How many of you guys ever talked yourself into something dumb? You need to talk yourself out of that, don't you? No, don't do that. Change your mind, right? We, we need to talk ourselves out of it. God says to Ezekiel, are these bones dry? Yes, Lord, they're dry. Are they dead? Yes, Lord, they're dead. And he asked him, can these bones live again? Guys, we need to begin to see what's happening from a different perspective and let God begin to do some change. Speak the promises until you see the surroundings change. You got to speak the promises until you see the surroundings change. And again, I'm going to go back. Where are the promises? Right here. If you don't know the promises, you, you could do a search online. How many guys know that you can get on Google and go, hey, what does the Bible say about promises? There's a website that I love called openbible.org, I think it is, openbible.org, and it lets you type a question. What does the Bible say about? And you could type it in, and it'll give you all these scriptures uh, about a certain subject. What does the Bible say about promises? And look, begin to see what God's word says about promises and the ones that just really hit your heart. Write them down on a card or something and put them on a window. Put them in your phone. 
Highlight them in your Bible so you can remember that these are the promises that God has made. Look at verse 5 again. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. See, I know my surroundings are the same. I know that the issues are the same. I know that my marriage is still in trouble. I know that I ain't got no job. I, I know that your family seems like it's falling apart. You, you got to begin to speak about the garden when you're in the middle of the graveyard. Amen? Change the way you're talking about how you're living. Think differently about it. Let God help you see it from his perspective. Look at verse 6. He said, verse six, he says, I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life and then you will know that I am the Lord. See, we need to begin to detail what we want to see God do in our life. Amen? How many of you guys know that detail matters to God? Make a list. How many of you guys got a list of some things that you should probably bring before the Lord and say, Lord, this is what needs to shift. This is what needs to change. This is what needs to be different. Some of you are like, yeah, I got a long list. My list is super long. Probably too long. It's not too long for God. How many of you guys know your list isn't too long for God? Your list doesn't shock God. Here he knows what your list is. He just wants you to bring it before him. Right? How many of you guys got kids that you already know what they want? You just want them to open their mouth and ask. Amen? Right? How many of you guys know that's how God treats us? Here he knows what we want. Here he knows what we need. But he's waiting for us to humble ourselves. Everyone say, humble yourselves. My Bible says this, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will what? He will lift you up. He will elevate you. Amen? I need to humble myself, stop being prideful, thinking I could do it on my own, and figure it out that God wants to be part of the process. And invite him into it with you. Amen? God's a gentleman, isn't he? He doesn't force himself on you. But he says, I'm always available. Amen? I'm right here. Just call my name, right? And I'll be there. Don't you know, baby? All right. Start talk, stop talking about them and start talking to them, amen? Talk to those situations. Begin to speak to those situations in your life. Begin to speak to those dead bones in your community, in your world, in your city, in your family. You know, I talked to some folks before the service. They started telling me a little bit about their life. And, and, I, and my encouragement was, you know what, man? Just love those people around you. How many of us know that we need to love people? Too many times we try to change people, amen? You've been trying to change your husband. You've been trying to change your wife. You've been trying to change your kids. You've been trying to change your community. If we're trying to change them all the time, you know what God's going to do? He's going to love them. But if we would simply start loving people, you know what God will do? He'll change them, amen? You love them, God will change them. Start loving people the way that you want them to change. And God will do the change in their life. Because they got to be loved before they can be changed. And if you just keep trying to change them, God's going to love them first. So start to love people and see what God does. Sometimes you got to begin to point out those things in your life that need to change and give instruction to those things that don't align with what God's word says. Verse 7 of chapter 37, it said, So I spoke the message just as the Lord told me. Suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. See, guys, we got to learn to not walk by what we see because when we walk by what we see, all we'll see is what is not instead of what can be. Don't walk by what you see because all you will see is what is and not what can be. When we walk by sight, what we see in front of us, it's going to look dead. It's going to look like there's no life in it. It's going to look like it's time for a divorce. It's going to look like it's time to throw our kids out. It's going to look like it's time to get a big loan or get a credit card and, and, and save our life by doing these things that we know that we shouldn't do. Because we're looking at it with our human eyes, and we need to begin to catch a spiritual vision for what God wants to do in and through our life. Amen? The bones of each body came together. Look at somebody and tell them it's all coming together. Hey, come on, it's all coming together. I believe that God is bringing it all together in our lives. I don't have my life together. I don't have my business plan together. I don't have my finances together. I don't have my family together. I don't have my mind together. But I see it coming together by faith, amen? I see God putting that stuff back together, my marriage being put back together, my kids' lives being put back together, my money being put back together, my spiritual freedom being put back together, amen? Some of you feel so bound up in sin right now. Break that power of sin right now in the name of Jesus. 
Put those things out of your life that are causing you to fall away from God. Fall on your knees right now, right? His kindness leads us to repentance is what my Bible says, amen? God is kind and loving. He's not pointing an accusing finger at you. He's saying, come on, come and leave that stuff here so you don't have to walk in it anymore. Some of you got some things in your life that you need to give over to the Lord and give up so that you can begin to walk in freedom because who the Son sets free is free indeed, amen? Actually, the cage door is already open, right? It's already blown wide open. How many guys know that when Jesus died on the cross, he opened the door to that cage? But we sit in there going, oh, I'm in prison. And we need to be a bird and fly, right? We need to get out of there and be free because who the sun sets free is free indeed. Walk in the freedom that Jesus wants to give you. I don't have it all together, but by faith I see it coming together. And just because it looks better, just because you make some changes, just because you do all things different doesn't mean it's all better. You can clean up at the outside, but the inside needs to be fixed. Amen? How many guys know that God wants to work on the inside also? Like I said earlier, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. Amen? Jesus said something about that, like whitewashed tombs. How many times do we clean the outer cup, but yet the inside of the cup is what needs to be cleaned? Jesus says clean the inside, and then you'll really be clean. Guys, don't worry about trying to get the outside working. Get the inside working because my thoughts become my words. My words become my actions and my actions set the course for my life. Look at verse eight. Then I watched muscles and flesh formed over the bones, then skin formed to cover the, the bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Everyone say breath. They had no breath in them. They looked better, but there was still no breath in them. I wonder how many times when there's just no life, it, things look a little bit better, but there's no life inside of it. Amen. And I believe that God is here tonight to breathe some life back into those dead areas of your life. Look at verse 9. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the wind, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. And I believe that God wants to breathe some life back into you right now. God wants to breathe some life back into those areas of your life where you've been dead. I want you to just breathe for a moment. Everyone just take a deep breath. Something changes when we do that, amen? It's like when I'm exercising, I got my heart rate up. If I take four deep breaths, nice and slow, do you know you slow your heart rate down? You actually slow your heart rate down. Guys, we need to stop, pause, and begin to breathe. The breath of life, right? The ruach. Everyone say ruach. That's the Hebrew word for, for wind, for breath. That's what God breathed into Adam. The ruach. And he became what? A living being. Amen. He formed him out of the dirt. And then he breathed into him. The ruach. The wind. The breath. The spirit of God. Guys, you need some wind in your sails. Amen. Let God begin to breathe into you. Because we're about out of breath in our life. We're out of breath and we need to breathe. How many of you guys have ever been there before? Physically, what does that feel like when you're out of breath? You ever felt like you're about to pass out? You ever feel like you're about to go out, right? You got to what? Breathe. Guys, just begin to breathe and let God begin to breathe his life into you. See, the church is out of breath. God's people are out of breath. And if we're out of breath, then we need to just, we're just dry bones with skin on them. Guys, we've been living like a sack of bones for too long. And God wants to breathe some life back into those bones. Look at verse 9 again. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the wind, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies, dead dreams, dead marriages, dead relationships, dead neighborhoods, so that they could live again. Amen? How many of you guys want to see life in the neighborhood around this church? I truly believe that the local church is the hope of a neighborhood. Amen? Yeah. I saw schools in this area. I know there's a lot of people that live around this area. The community's big, but guess what, man? You guys are going to be a lifeline, amen? How many of you guys want to be a part of being a lifeline to the community around you? Let God begin to be a lifeline for you, amen? See, we can't make any noise without breath. And if we're ever going to make any noise for God, if we're ever going to shake things up, if we're ever going to make an impact in our city, we have to have the breath of God inside of us. We have to let him breathe life into me personally. Breathe life into me. To breathe life into the world around you that you live in. 
to give, give you the breath and impact to change your surroundings, to make a difference. You know what you need? You're going to need the Holy Spirit in your life. Because until you breathe, you're just bones. Until you breathe, you're just bones. Begin to breathe and let God do something in your life. You must look past your surroundings to the one who surrounds your surroundings. Think about the depth of that. I got to stop looking at my surroundings and look to the one who surrounds my surroundings. God's in it to win it in your life. Amen. And it's all about letting the Holy Spirit come into your life. And then, and then Ezekiel got the final vision. And what it was, was the four winds came and breathed in and these bodies became living, breathing people, a mass army. How many of you guys know that when we got the breath of God, we just become an army that's ready to go to war with what's happening in our community. Amen. Scripture says that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers of darkness, and rulers in the unseen world. That means it's a spiritual battle, amen? God wants us to engage in some spiritual warfare and to make an impact and make a difference. See, Mark 15, 37, it says, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. When Jesus breathed out, it was so that you and I could breathe in. When Jesus said, it is finished, and he breathed his last breath. That was so that you and I could breathe in all of what he has for us. Would you just close your eyes for a moment and just let the Lord begin to speak to your heart? Acts 1.8 says, but when you receive, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. Listen to me. God wants to begin to fill you with power. And that power comes when the Spirit of God begins to fill your lungs, begins to fill your life. And you're no longer stuck in that dry, dead valley, but you're beginning to live the life that God has for you. And I wonder how many of you came in here tonight with a bunch of dead bones. How many of you can feel like Ezekiel and you're right there in the midst of that valley, you feel so far away from where God wants you to be. And you even feel stuck and you've, you tried to clean it up a little bit on the outside and put on a smile and act like everything's okay. And you've learned some Christian words that help it seem like everything's good, but on the inside you're dying and you need some life. Today, I believe God wants to breathe some life into you. Maybe you're in here tonight and you've never opened your life up to Jesus. Maybe you got invited by a friend or maybe you've been coming to this church for a long time and you've never surrendered your life to Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Jesus is here tonight to give us new life. If that's you in any way and you just need to respond to God and say, Mike, will you pray with me? I, I, just, I just need the Lord to meet me right where I'm at. Would you just shoot your hand up right where you're at so I can pray with you? Right where you're at. Yeah, thank you. You want God to put some life back into those situations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Don't miss out on this. Let the Lord meet you right here where you're at. Let this be a pivotal moment in your life. October 4th, 2023, God began to breathe some life back into that dead situation that you were living in. That he began to give you some hope in that hopelessness that you had. That he began to give some light where it seemed like you were walking only in darkness. Let the light of Jesus begin to change and transform where you're at right now. Let him fill you up and give you a brand new beginning. Can we pray this prayer together? Will you pray this with me? Would you say, Jesus, I surrender my life, my vision, my thoughts, my words, my actions. I lay them down at your feet. I ask you to forgive me for the times that I've walked in defeat. Would you speak life to those dead areas? to my marriage, to my kids, to my family, to my finances, to whatever it is that I'm dealing with. Speak life. Teach me to speak life, to trust in your promises, to lean into you, to see it from your perspective, 
Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lead me and guide me into all that is true. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, can we celebrate that tonight? Come on, man. Let's give God some praise. Well, I really thank you guys for letting me come. Hopefully, you got encouraged tonight, man. Know, know that God wants to speak life into you and into this church. I think about the vision of the lifeline, you know, the heartbeat. When things have flatlined, man, we need, we need to do some CPR, amen? Maybe some things have flatlined, and we need to begin to do the work and start pumping, right? I, I did see, who's ever done a CPR class, right? Whether it's a staying alive, right? We're doing your staying alive, staying alive. We got to remind ourselves, hey, I'm staying alive in Christ. Amen. Because in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks for letting me be here tonight.